There's no questions? <laughs> I have a question. Could you go back to the chassis design you said? On your pictures there? So that was in the final product, yeah. Yeah. So, are those like two rings there, one in the front? Two rings? Two rings. Which part? Well, I guess both okay. is. On how you design it. Tell me, tell me what I'm pointing at. In front of the screen. The roll right there. No, no, no. The I vertical, the vertical too. Front roll. Right. Oh, it, this is one piece. It starts here. Uh huh. And it goes through. It goes a all the way Yeah, there's a bend here, and a bend here, and a bend here. That's actually part of the rules. Yeah, they want this to be a single piece. And, you, and there's the one like that in the back? Yeah. Actually? Yeah, from here, it goes up. There's a bend here. It goes up, a bend. It goes downside, a bend. And it goes here. So, so you have a straight bar, and then you have a giant piece. So that sort of subdivides your frame into your jet and Yeah. Three it's, it's really for safety. I mean, if the vehicle rolls over, they, they basically want a protective box. That's why you have all these side impact rules. Uh, you have a lot of rules up here. There's a template that has to pass through the front so it makes it large enough to make you know, to get in a crash and nothing goes through your legs. Um, actually, there's, there's also an impact attenuator, which is a giant block of honeycomb aluminum that goes on the front. Which acts as an impact so if you get into the front. But yeah, safety is a big priority for the vehicle. Do you guys figure out how fast it will go? Um, it can probably reach speeds of light. Light. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So we, mock numbers. we don't have any imperial data, empirical data, because, you know, obviously, it's on the top track, track speed. On 80 Japan. 80 miles an hour, anywhere from 60 to 80 miles probably an hour. 60. Uh, supposedly, they, track. Yeah. supposedly they can max out at 90 if we've heard from other teams. On a straightaway, you can get them going probably at the 90, but the course is full of very tight turns, so you actually stay probably between the third, you know, the 25 to 60 range, because you're making lots of turns. And how much was the weight of the uh, It was about 56 pounds. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Can you uh, estimate how many you need to get out of the course, right? Probably about the end of summer. We hope. That would be great. Because there's a lot of other systems that have to be developed. There's that the electrical, the, the braking system has to be hooked up. The all the intake and the exhaust has to be done back here. There's a system called the dry sum. And yeah. And so you all the there there's actually a group of about twenty members called Osprey Racing. They're right back there. Yeah, there's the back there. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, they're they're each designing their own different components of the car, and we have to have it done by summer. So we're actually the drive. I'd like to thank you guys. You guys have worked so hard. Um, when Justin and I started the club in the spring of last year, we didn't have any support. These guys have worked really, really hard and getting support. If I may, I wanted to ask one other question here. So up front, is that? And I guess it's maybe for. Mike, is that the steering? Where's the, the, the rack? The rack. Yeah, that's yeah, what Justin's pointing at. And so those connection points are in the forward lower mm -hmm. quadrant. Yeah, you can see. Well, uh, you can see over here. Yeah, if you divide this is the wheel, and you divide it up into four. This is the front lower, and it connects to the, the steering arm in the upright, which is a little tab that sticks out. Was that a desirable location for connection, or it was sir? The wheel package is really tight. There's not a lot of room to work with. So that's really, we wanted a long steering arm that was adjustable. So basically we pushed the point as far out and still had parallel steering involved. And that's where it ended up. Yeah, originally we had it on, the, it was flipped over. We had it on the back side and it came into the bottom quadrant. But when we started, when we, and we had the, actually, can you go back to the, the comparison? We, we had the, the, the shocks and the rocker up here, so the, the, rocker, the, the shock and the rocker was here, we had room for the steering wheel, but when we changed that location, we had to move the steering wheel. So everything is interconnected. I mean, you change one thing, and you affect three other people's systems. And the box design there in the front, that's dictated by some of the rules for safety? Yes, it's mostly dictated by your suspension points. It's not almost like, no, not at all. But yeah, there's a template that has to pass through the front, and there's one that has to go into the cockpit. Well, there's going to be bodywork that goes on top of it too, to make it more streamlined and aerodynamic. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So when you're all finished actually making the car, is there going to be a place where we can see it online? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, yeah, you can see it online right now. Um, you can have our website. Yeah, we have a website. It's OscarRacing.org. Um,
can go there, you can check out all our photos and stay up to you know, up to date with the latest news. Okay, great. That's my mom, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed his presentation. Sorry. He, over, he overshot the campus by about 10 miles. <laughs> oh. Someone gave bad directions. I don't know. <laughs> Is the motor is the motor stock? No. Um, kind of. It, it's a Honda CBR 600RR, but um, Casey and Evan Hathaway are actually replacing the entire oil cooling system. There's this thing called a dry sump and a wet sump. It's actually pretty fascinating, and it might be like my second choice for senior design if I were able to do this. You uh, your second choice for senior design. <laughs> <laughs> you, the motorcycle has a system called a wet sump, and all the and the, oil, the oil circulates inside the car. Uh, which is okay for a motorcycle, but when you take a motorcycle engine and you transfer it to a car, it's no longer leaning into the turns. And when you have a car and you're going through the turns, the oil is going to slosh to the sides, and you'll suffer from oil starvation. You know, you have bent rods and reduced cooling, everything like that. Um, so what the dry sump does is it actually takes that system out of the engine and puts it into an external reservoir. And you have to design your own oil pan your own uh, pump, your own reservoir with baffles. I mean, it's like an entirely complex uh, system. And so it circulates the engine, to the oil through the engine to an external reservoir. And how about so the, that's how it's modified. How about the brakes are hydraulically driven? Yes. So there's a, a hydraulic system? That yeah, there's going to be a bend, bend, and bend width in the back is developing the, the master cylinder system and the pedal system, which is going to be connected to a brake line which runs to the four wheels. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, the whole car, all the systems on the car are really amazing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, who's with the electrical? Uh, we don't have really <laughs> mashup between probably, I'll probably hop out a little bit, Case, and Casey's taking the lead on that so far. Okay, well, I've got lots of resources. Yeah, course. we need help with data logging and ECU and uh, data acquisition. So. Fuel? No, data acquisition. Oh, who's going to do the fuel? Um, so Jacob says, Jacob said. <laughs> yeah, the fuel tank actually sits underneath the driver. It's a triangular shape. And he's designed the tank, the flange, and the pump, and the, the routing to take the fuel from the tank. The to, and all that. Yeah, through the ECU to the fuel injectors. Yes, sir. Justin, do you have to use a tank or do you have to use a cell? What's the difference? Cell is, uh, is what? All race cars have. Well, well actually, so. that, Jacob's probably better suited to answer that question. Do you know the answer? I mean, we're using a tank or we're running fuel foam with it. If you're asking, like, if we're using, like, a, like a soft tank? Yeah, like no. a safety cell? No, we're not using a cell. Yeah, I was going to say, if you, if you need a safety cell, let me know. Like a, oh, okay. Uh, right, 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 fuel right. safety cell. Okay, okay, right, 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 right. Yeah, I was actually reading a lot of people's safety cells. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're we'll get These guys are going to come pick your brains. I don't think someone's going to met you yet. Yes. I was wondering, what's it going to look like in the end? What color is it going to be? Is it going to be? We can't answer that question. <laughs> we, don't have the, we don't have the arrow. Is, is Jared here? No, Jared's not. Jared's working on the arrow. We don't, we don't have that done, so we can't tell you. But it's going to be cool. Sure it is. <laughs> it's probably going to have flames down there. Oh, yes. <laughs> School colors? Yes. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And, and please make sure you fill out your forms so we can uh, get these guys. Oh, yeah. Right. And there's a big room. Go over to the big room and you can pick up the parts, look at the chassis, and Great. hear us ramble. So, yeah. thank, thank you for answering the question. I got business cards if you want to get our website or follow up. Or thank you, Dr. Oh, absolutely. I want to thank the affiliates also, Jason. Um,